everyone. I'm Jan Mercer Doms, the Vice President of U.S. Development with Joy Meshad. We are an ecosystem of brands for women, by women connecting women to each other and to the companies, causes, and organizations that champion equity for women professionally and personally. Happy September. This morning, you are watching Speak Your Mind with Dr. Risa Riger. Hi, Risa. Welcome. Happy September. Hi, Jan. Great to see you. And it's so much fun to be sharing the show with you. I love this show, Risa, because it helps us to kick off each and every Monday, positive spirits, excellent framing of mind and a way to ground ourselves that I think just carries us through the entire week. Risa, we love having you with us every day, every, every week. (laughs) And, and as to the everyday part, if you do (laughs) want to spend some time with us every day, you can continue to watch the show because it's available for you. That's a great point. Thank you, Risa. Yes, please make sure to join our YouTube channel at Join Me Shad and check us out on our website at joinmeshad.com to learn more about how you can become a part of how together we revolutionize how professional women connect, engage, and do business together. So this is going to be a really interesting thing because we're in September and usually September marks new beginnings, fall fashion, fashion week, the U.S. Open, but also marks changing of seasons And as we launch into fall, as we like to say at Meshad, fall forward, there's going to be a lot of changes this year as we experience how kids go back to school differently, how we spend our time differently, and making sure that we want to spend each and every available moment outside to the extent possible before temperatures turn. Now, Risa, I know that you're a golfer, and we have a very special episode for everyone today around women in sports. And Risa, love your golf shirt. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks, Jan. And, you know, as we're talking about this moment of positivity, I'm just going to, uh, can't help the golf metaphor, swing it back to a positive thing that really piggybacks with what you're talking about, Jan, is that we're doing things differently. And so in the past week, positive moment is that... uh, as so many people are in celebration and they can't celebrate the way that they normally would. And so people are not congregating, uh, you know, weddings and graduations that we've seen have all changed. And that happened in my life as well with a very dear friend whose daughter was getting married and it was a very, very small celebration. And I was thinking, what can I do for them? to, you know, kind of give them a surprise and make me feel good also, because we were we were sad that we weren't going to be together for this part of the wedding. So what I did and um, you all will get to know my dog, Sammy. My dog, Sammy, is a 12 pound little Bichon who loves accessories. So what happened was that I uh, came home from the golf course, actually, in the car. I got this idea And so I put a little hat on Sammy and I found wedding music and I made these signs and then I filmed it, which Jan knows very well that this was like a technological miracle for me. (laughs) Um, And so I filmed Sammy and then I made these uh, sheets of paper that said, what a wonderful day. We're so happy for you. We're sending you all our love with the wedding music in the background and Sammy in the foreground. And it was so funny and so wonderful. And I sent it to them. It was a surprise. They giggled and giggled with it. And so that was my positive for the week of how do I how do I do something and share and connect with people in a way that can really be fun and joyous? And here today, uh, first of all, we're so happy that you're here joining us. This is the sisterhood. This is your community. You, you're always welcome. And we're thrilled that you're here. And now to go back and talk some more about, about golf. And I'm sure Jan has some very interesting things in mind. <laughs> Well, and I'm incredibly excited because an old dear friend is joining us in the show today, too. The very founder of Women's Golf Day herself, Alyssa Gerdeau. Hi, Alyssa. Welcome. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Yeah, thank you for having me. Of course. You know, Risa, I want to know, I'm not a golfer, although I have taken golf lessons 
And I understand tremendously the importance of it from a networking perspective, but then also from a physical activity perspective as well. And if we think through what happens now for the rest of 2020 and beyond, we all want to be outside as much as possible. We know the importance of fighting COVID-15, the COVID-15, not COVID-19, but the COVID-15, the 15 extra pounds that we're all gaining because of COVID. <laughs> and wanting to make sure that we're also, Risa, to your point, connecting with family members and colleagues and friends and associates, particularly for those of us who aren't going back to a physical office anytime soon in the fall. And so what an incredible way for us to be able to experience something new and different for those of us that haven't golfed in the past, um, then to really consider how golf may become a part of how we think about everything from social connection and community and networking to just, you know, getting out there and, and, and realizing the, the physical attributes of it. Risa, talk to us a bit about what is it about, I love your golf stories, number one. Talk to us about how you became involved and interested in golf and why. So I am an unlikely golfer and I'm athletic, I'm, I'm coordinated, but I never thought that golf would be a space that I would be involved with. And I never felt a particular orientation towards golf. and. And so I think that this is a, a great way to start because, you know, how did this come about? Well, my husband's a golfer uh, and with um, difficulty, as is as are many golfers, uh, that I just thought, well, well, let him go do his thing. And I found another woman who our husbands golf together and she's coordinated also. And we just looked at each other and we said, we can do this. So we started out together and it just wound up turning out to be a very wonderful experience in that I wasn't looking for it to prove my mark. Um, I had a very different orientation to it, which is that this is beautiful. It's beautiful to be outside. And as a psychologist and consultant, I take on very big issues and to go out and play golf, I just couldn't get upset about where my ball went. You know, in the scheme of things and in perspective, this is what I was doing for my free time, for fun, for camaraderie, for being outdoors to your point, Jan. And so the more I did it, the more I got into it and and something I want to talk with you about, Alyssa, is that for me, it was almost informal meditative practice because you have to go and stand next to the ball. There's nothing else there. It's you, your club and the ball. And you really need to bring the focus of your attention to what you're doing. If you don't have focus, if you're not tuned into that moment in time and be present for it, you're not going to get anywhere with it. And so it became that for me, this like very chill, focused, present moment. And it's a lot of fun. And so Jan, I know, um, Jan has a particular orientation to golf where uh, golf happens when she's wearing a Missoni dress and heels. <laughs> so there's a, a, a photo of me, Alyssa, which was taken at year, one of your events with yeah. me wearing a Missoni dress and heels. And we, it was at, at a, at a place in Manhattan and we were in a golf simulation contest and I actually came in second place. And I was so yeah. excited because as a child, my father made me take golf lessons many, many, many decades ago. I was the only girl as a part of this group of boys who were taking golf lessons. I was probably maybe seven or eight years old at the time. Bought all the golf clubs, had the golf outfit, et cetera, et cetera. But I could not get the ball in the air. And for me... First of all, it was very intimidating being the only girl and a bunch of guys in the the what the late seventies at this point, and and I actually decided to give it up because I felt like if I wasn't going to be the best at something, I did not want to participate. <laughs> and but in hindsight, I think that that taught me so much just about things like competition, making sure to encourage other young women in our lives to even in those 
spaces and places where others around you may not look like you to really stick with it if you're enjoying it, right? And to really see the value reset to exactly the points that you mentioned around you know, using it as a, as a form of meditation, as a form of relaxation, but also as a way to really get to know different people too, because you might not be always in the same social circles and there's tremendous value for the socialization of girls and women, honestly, to be able to put ourselves in spaces where we feel uncomfortable. And if there's anything about 2020 that we've learned is that there's a whole bunch of messes in which we feel uncomfortable because it's 2020. All right. Lisa, I would love to learn from you the, the motivation and the passion behind founding Women's Golf Day. So, yeah. And a lot of what you're saying is what I've heard for years and years. So I've been in the golf business since about 2009 so, and always on the business side, and I worked for the Latin Golf Tour and the PGA Tour and ran a World Cup in Mexico. And I, you know, have gone to so many conferences and so many things, and they were saying, you know, we love to see more women get involved. And you have to realize that the women, we all know this uh, to some degree, but what sports has caught on to and how I got this idea was actually at a, at a multi-sports conference in Manhattan. And I saw like the NFL and the NBA were looking at women as economic influencers. If you see commercials around the holidays, there'll be like an older woman's voice. I bought a Patriots uh, shirt for my son and a a Seahawks uh, thing for my nephew. My grandkids got Red Sox. Anyway, that's baseball. But the idea was seeing women as an economic influencer. Golf is the only sport that has a negative connotation. They call it the golf widow. Um, because traditionally men went out and left the women and they didn't take it up themselves. And it is just a phenomenal sport. You've hit on a number of things. It's a connector. You connect with nature, you connect with yourself and you connect with others. And the connecting with yourself is probably at the end of the day, the most valuable. And what you have to do, as Risa mentioned, is you have to be super focused to hit the shot, but then you have this downtime. So you get to the next shot. So you have to really, I mean, you can't, I mean, some people can, I mean, people wonder why Tiger Woods or people like that are so good. I mean, to keep that intense mental focus for four hours, which is how long it takes to play around, you know, 18 holes at a decent pace, right? So you, it's, it's very hard to do that. So you have to be able to go in and out of focus, connect with yourself, you're out in nature, you're connecting. So that's where the meditative therapeutic part would come in and then as well. You know, to be able to connect with other people. And that's where the business aspect. And I always tell women, it's not like men go out there and they've got a contract rolled up in their golf bag and they're like, hey, sign here. No, it's because you spend four hours with somebody. You're not at a restaurant where a waitress is interrupting you. You're not in somebody's office where they're pressed for time. There's no phone ringing. Most golf courses do not allow you to have phones. As I say that, <laughs> phones going on. Um, I think that historically, uh, men people have associated men as older white men or the people that play golf and that it was uh, very exclusionary. It wasn't inclusive, but it's interesting as we move into a world of inclusivity, when you look at people sometimes are oversharing technology and everything else. Um, it's uh, women should don't feel compelled to do it, that they have to do it for business or they have to do it to get ahead. I think there is that. So I think the mindset going into it isn't as positive and this is how, after these numerous conferences and, you know, we're going to have a fashion show or, a, a, you know, a pizza party to try to get more women. And I was like, that's not going to work, <laughs> especially as we move into a more evolved age. Um, so, but this isn't male bashing. We need the men. There's so many men who have been super supportive. So the idea was, and we beta tested it in the Boston area, and then this is how it rolled out. It's a one day a year. And it's four hour experience. The first two hours, women show up and they have the choice of either taking lessons. Maybe you're going to spend 45 minutes on the driving range, 45 minutes chipping and putting. Or if you're already a golfer, you play nine holes and you play a scramble, which is non-competitive. It's teamwork. It's everybody hits the ball. Whoever gets the best shot, you all hit from that best shot. And then from that, you keep going. So it encourages people. They're cheering for each other. They've maybe... Like you, someone like yourself, Jen, who hasn't played in a while. And then the second half of the two of the four hour experience, the last two hours are social. So depending on what time of day they do it, it can either be a brunch or a lunch or a cocktail or a dinner. And we encourage every location to have a charity component. 
We don't care if it's pet adoption, if it doesn't have to be raising money. So a charity component and then some type of speaker that can add to it. And once we don't care if it's scrapbooking or Susie Ormond, you know what I mean? Whatever, no judgment. And that's the number one thing that we found. There is no judgment. And what it's become is if you want to wear, I mean, as long as it's not a private club, but this is available, the locations sign up with us. We have over 900 locations in 52 countries that do it all on the exact same day. It goes for 24 hours straight, starting in Australia. And if you go along the globe, all you have to do is get on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and you're going to see Nigeria, Morocco, India, China, all the way till Hawaii. It ends in Hawaii. So it's pretty incredible what it's morphed into and these women getting together. But the social sharing then is extended onto the online. And um, this is where we found that it's, it created this connectivity. And, it, and private clubs can do it. It can be public or private, and they can charge a fee or not. So we're like, the more casual places and the clubs are okay with it. It's a Tuesday. You want to wear your yoga pants and a golf shirt or whatever. There isn't, no one's going to like, you know, you're wearing the wrong outfit or you're not doing this right. Or you're not doing that right. It's very welcoming, very relaxed. The instructors love it. They feel like it's super fun. And you know that, that's, where, that's how it's taken off because it's a short format, inclusive, engaging and welcoming. So to add to that, because golf can be intimidating, right? It can be a hard, it can be intimidating in that it's a hard, it can be a hard entry point. It's like, what am I going to do? I'm coming out there. I, I have to hold a club. I maybe I know how to swing a baseball bat because that's been more, you know, just accessible in some ways. And and then what's going to happen? Like, what if my ball goes here or my ball goes there or my ball goes nowhere? How, how am I going to be able to do this? And so for a lot of women, part of the difficulty is that you don't have to know how to do this and that you don't have to be perfect at doing Not it wrong. because there's no such thing as perfection. And I'll just give you a share of when I started and you know, I think that, you know, basically anytime I golf, um, there's the good, the bad and the ugly and, and the shots, you know, my shots go in all of those directions. If they were all good, I'd be a pro. So that's not the case. But what happened was that I went on a golf, I signed up for a little tournament and they put us in teams. And the way that this was done was that there were women who were great golfers they were like one two three four and if and I was on the four but in every group there was a one a two a three and a four and that we had a camaraderie and an understanding that that people were going to be there women who were there who were beginners and one of the things that can be really fantastic uh, about being with women is the support that you can get and in a scramble format, like you were saying, it, you don't tank it for your team. Like everyone has a chance to do a good job. And you never know yes. whether it's going to be your shot that's going to help your team move forward. And so it's 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 very accepting. It can be warm, a whole lot of fun. Um, and you don't have to be great at doing it. But it's about going into your own head and letting go of that thing that a lot of women have. Like, I'm not good enough yet. I'm going to wait until and then fill in the blank. Right. Absolutely. I agree. Whatever. And to be able to take the risk and to your point, Alyssa, you know, which is great. It's like, get out there. Get out there. It's a, it's a ball. You could pick it up. No. And yeah, and that's what I tell people. Just don't, don't in these environments. And then what we encourage is that every location then tells women, give them some choices. If you want to continue on and take some lessons, come back. If you want to just go to the driving range, if you want to get your kids involved, if you want to just do nine and wine, listen, I'm in this, what, 20 some odd years. I'm the number one person that like, I don't want to play more than nine holes. I want to play with people that are fun and easygoing because I do this for work. So I'm not going to be stressed out on the golf course. And um, 
if I don't hit a good shot, I, I, many times I don't pick up, I won't keep score. I'll pick up the ball. Nothing, I mean, there's no value for me to spend 20 minutes trying to hit it out of weeds, you know, that are like uh, two feet high. It's just not for me. So that's what I, and I'm, and I'm somebody that people are like, Oh, you must be a great golfer. And blah, blah, blah. no, but I think, you know, this is something you can do it, modify it to your likes and to your wants and needs, whether that's time. Cause a lot of people think there's a lot of time. You can just go to a driving range. It's so therapeutic. I used to put like um, a headset on or music, you know, and just hit balls, you know, it's just really good um, to just get in a zone and do that. Just even if you never play golf, there's so many options. I mean, even in large cities, there's Chelsea Piers, there's Top Golfs, there's all of those places. Any one of these retail locations um, have, you know, a lot of them have uh, simulators inside their, um, off, you know, inside their, their uh, retail locations, even in the big cities. You know, you both are raising such really very important points that really transcend a golf club and a golf ball and a golf course. But we're really talking about the way in which um, the sport of golf is becoming more inclusive. We're talking about the way in which golf can be used as a socializing, equalizing factor. I think that there's a, a perception that golf is cost prohibitive for, for many Americans. Because there is that the association of you know the private clubs with all white men wearing the same golf outfit and you know their caddies and you know and so there is a perception that it's often outside of um, a, a professional woman's budget, for example. But Alyssa, I love the ideas that you mentioned. I love Chelsea Piers. So for all of our viewers who are in the New York City area, I highly recommend going to Chelsea Piers. It's a great date night with your significant other, your spouse. It's a great brunch activity with your girlfriends it's a great way to really hone in and have fun like who, who would not enjoy hitting golf balls out over water <laughs> there you know there's there's something else I think that's really helpful for women in golf which is that we we can be hard on ourselves and we can be perfectionistic and the thing is that whether You've hit a good shot, a medium shot, a bad shot, whatever it is. You you have to let go of what just happened in order to be able to do the next one. And that I, it gives us this incredible opportunity to really work on what our mindset is. And, and I have to say, Alyssa, you've really inspired me that I have a, you know, your mindset matters, and that's part of a, you know, a series that I do. And now I'm going to do your mindset matters when you're playing golf or some sort of a title. And I'm gonna yeah, there's so many analogies to life. Sorry to interrupt, but there's yeah. so many analogies yeah. that you're bringing up. And I think that if people are just mindful when they you know are doing it, that yes, there are. Whether it's resilience or yeah, take it, getting yourself off the hook, and just think, well, the last one, last one sucked. And I'm going to hop on again and give this, an, you know, and and the ball doesn't know that you hit a bad shot before. And so it has to make it up to you in the next shot. The ball doesn't know that you hit a good shot so that the ball can't let you down and go someplace bad. And so it's an opportunity like to keep to keep practicing and to really become more aware of what are you telling yourself? You know, what, what are you, what are you telling yourself about what you're doing and yeah, how it, 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 you outside of the course? Just, yeah. But it, like you said, and it is just about moving on, you know, you have to just go to the next, like if you lose a deal or you don't, the pe people don't return your email or whatever you're doing in, in business, which is why it's actually, you know, good because it is you just, you have to just move on. And I think we've learned adapt and change, adapt and change. I mean, there's, if anything, this year has taught us that you have to adapt and change. I mean, it's very Darwinistic survival of the fittest, you know, um, we here we are, we have all these events. I mean, anybody that's event based or, I mean, I feel for them because that's completely gone. And um, we turned our original first Tuesday in June date to a digital day and got people to engage that way. So I think, uh, and I just bring that up because I think a lot of people are struggling, you know, I mean, I've um, worked from home and had my own business since 2003. So I was like, Oh, I got this. And even for me, it's difficult, but I know people are out there. And um, 
So obviously golf is one of the sports that was able to come back. So that's good. And, and they've seen a surge of people. I encourage anybody, if you even have an interest, go to a driving range, go to any of these stores, go online. As Jan mentioned, even um, Chelsea Piers, they do literally have date night. And I think even if you're single, you can go, or there's lots of things that you can engage and try it, or just go to a retail store and they'll be happy to put you in the little simulator and show you or give you a class and, and look at options. I think um, for, you know, research, I'm sure you're talking about all the time is just for our mental health to get out and be able to do something and be with people in a safe way. We're going to have to, I mean, it's not going away tomorrow. So um, I encourage everybody to do that. And then, you know, how this can apply to adapting. I mean, yes, we had to adapt. I wasn't a digital company. We were, I mean, we used it for registration, but we've become a digital company. We have now content and everything else. And I think that, um, you know, you, you just have to, this have to learn to adapt and change and how the best way we can possibly do that. Alyssa, you're global now as well. Yeah. Share with us some of the experiences of the women across the world. And do you see any cultural differences in their participation? It, in women's golf this, golf? yeah. And, and, you know, this is a startup. And Jan, as you know, because I was living in Manhattan when I started this in 2016. And, you know, you never know. Um, I've been in this, you know, startup or consulting, what have you, world for a while. And the thing that keeps me going, I mean, the U.S. is a very saturated golf market, Europe, places that you would think of, Scotland, Ireland. But we have women from Nigeria, we think 52 countries, 52. Think about that for a second. We have Nigeria. We have Uganda. We have um, Morocco. During Ramadan, I'm extremely proud of the fact that we had six Muslim countries and that last year they did it during Ramadan. I mean, now this year is like, you know, very difficult for everybody because every country is different. We said, do if it's safe to do it, do it in small groups, what have you. I wasn't as concerned. But those countries and, and last year we also had a course in Saudi Arabia where women can't drive or just barely got able to drive. So I do feel a huge sense of responsibility that we, um, those of us that are in a more evolved anything, business scenario, economic scenario, social scenario, I do think, and whether it's women or men, um, if it's within you to take it upon you and move that ball forward, sorry for the golf analogy, but move it forward for somebody else. And if by them getting out in Saudi Arabia and being able to play Mixing with Western women, maybe it's a private club, it could be diplomats, who cares? It's a start. That is so fantastic. And I love the the component of it, of it moving literally around the world. In 24 hours, it's moving around the world. And there's something about you're doing it, so you're the individual, and you're the individual coming to your space for this event. And you're part of this event in your country, on your continent, and you're part of this event globally. And to be able to have that kind of share and so that it doesn't matter where you are, but that you've just had a shared experience with women around the world who will be able to relate to what happened with you, right? And that yeah. you can relate to them. So it's it's this connection where you feel like, oh, oh yeah, that happened to a bad shot. Oh, yeah, that happened to me. Great shot. Oh, yeah, that happened to me. And that it breaks down barriers. Yeah. And, and they so say golf is a community. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely. And they say that golf is, you know, they always refer to like the fraternity. And I'm like, this is the sisterhood if there ever was one. Because there is no other sport in the world that has this engagement on the same day. And also, and I'll tell you, if and anybody who's watching, five minutes, all you have to do is go to Instagram or Facebook at Women's Golf Day or Twitter for that matter, at Women's Golf Day on Instagram. Just look right down there and you're going to see all these ones that I just told you about, Nigeria, Uganda, Morocco, everywhere. So yeah, and then the women, we tell them to wear, our, this is our logo. So you can see the, lady sign with a golf club and thing, but um, with a golf club and ball and little spiky heel uh, shoes on. 
But if they, um, we tell everybody to wear red and white. So you, we couldn't be photoshopping this. I mean, we can't make this up. And this year between the digital day and this event that just happened on September 1st, which was, you know, probably less than we normally would have. But um, we had 60 million impressions. That's people looking at it. Men, women, everybody. Like I said, it takes some men. A lot of men are teaching it, uh, teaching the classes. They love it. You peel the onion back one layer and all the guys I know in the golf industry, especially the ones that have been super supportive from the very um, top governing bodies and agencies, their wife, their daughter, their sister, their coworker plays, and they've seen the struggle and they want to make it accessible. I mean, the, it, it really isn't exclusive. And quite honestly, the thing I was telling them is nobody cares about what you're doing. I can promise you that. <laughs> We're all stressed out about our own golf ball and our own issue. So don't worry about your outfit. Don't worry if you woof it and somebody's looking at it. Or if it goes in the People don't even notice because we're all so worried about our own. <laughs> you know, I, and, I, and I even think in, in 2020, given the pandemic, we're all having to become much more local, right? We're much more isolated in the physical sense from each other. We're not necessarily traveling, even though this Labor Day, we know that almost a million Americans for the first time in the last six months actually traveled over this last weekend. Um, but yet in a, this time, we're finding so much isolation and so much recent, I know that you can speak to this for hours around the anxiety and the loneliness and the despair that many Americans are feeling right now, and rightly so. But yeah, this is such an incredible way to feel like you're a part of something, a part of something globally, where we may not be doing a lot of international traveling right now. We may not be able to see friends. We may not be able to go to the physical office. But yeah, what an incredible way to actually broaden your horizons in a moment in time where our world's become so narrowly defined. So two things I want to say about that. One is that even if you're in a tiny apartment, and Manhattan is amazing about tiny apartments, that even <laughs> if you're in a tiny apartment, you can have a putter and you can and you can putt. And you can have putting events with your friends. I mean, if you start to use your imagination of how you can connect that you don't need that kind of space. You don't even have to be outdoors, that you could you could putt in your you can apartment. So that's one thing. And the other thing I just wanted to make sure if you, um, if thanks to indulge me in this, that I wanna make sure to mention is that for children, that for children, that they have an opportunity with golf, take them to a driving range, put them in a yard, take a, go to a park, Whatever it is, it doesn't matter because with golf, there is the component of focus, release, focus, release, focus, release. And particularly with children, when you, we're working to build attention, concentration, compassion, focus and resilience, that Having a stationary ball so you don't have to watch about, you know, watch out for whatever somebody else is doing, where they're moving, let's say soccer or whatever other sport there is, and you're in your focus and you repeat it over and over again. So it's a great focusing exercise where they also get to whack a ball. <laughs> so it, it works. It works really quite well. I think we're all suffering from ADD right now to some extent, right? And so the amount of focus and concentration and just commitment to time to be on the golf course for four hours, if you're doing 18 holes, even if you're doing nine holes for a couple of hours, Risa, I really appreciate what you said about focus and release because I think that that's something for us who don't golf, that's something we don't think about, right? So it's not just hitting a, a ball around a golf course, but there is this mental stamina to it. And I think right now that's um, a trait that could serve all of us very well as we prepare for whatever comes next in the fall with coronavirus potentially 2.0 and then in 2020 for this new world that we're all in now. And with focus and release and the focus state, I mean, just from a, a brain, a brain and a holistic perspective. As a, as a human being, when we're in a focused state, that we're in a state of integration, it's like our pieces are working together and coming together like gears. So we have our minds, we have our bodies, we have our feelings, we, you know, all these different components of who we are. And the gears 
of who we are meshed together for that, you know, for that moment. And, and that's so important in terms of being able to reset and reset and reset yourself and have that touch moment of self-integration. So um, may not be what you both thought about, about but, uh, <laughs> um, but that's what, and, and it's fun. Alyssa, another question for you, just around kind of the corporate nature of this. And we know that, you know, there are many companies now who will subsidize golf lessons for women um, because they obviously understand the importance of it from a business development, from a networking perspective. Do you think to what Reese is talking about in the sense of all the other benefits that come along with it, companies now in this moment in time where we're all thinking about what else can we do to really make best in workplaces, best in workplaces because of coronavirus, We'll see this as a benefit as well and want to, you know, enhance their programs if they already have one or create something new if they don't. Yeah, I do. Because of the fact, like we said, is that it's one of the only things that you can do now, whether it's for adults or children. Um, a lot of companies have dabbled, you know, and do you, you, you see from sponsorship um, of J tour events and things like that, that they understand the value of it. But I do see, um, you know, some corporations, even as team building or what have you. Um, and that's, you know, we've been saying for years is whether you're a financial advisor or doesn't want you know, any wrong. When you go and spend the four hours with somebody on a golf court, you're going to find it. You're going to talk a lot more about you'll realize personal things than you end up talking about business but you develop that relationship. So do you have kids or you don't? And where do they go to school? And where did you go to school? And, you know, it can take any route. Um, and you end up really talking about golf courses you play, how long have you played? You know, here we are talking and you can imagine. So that's what happens. And you're in this natural setting. People are relaxed. And that's how, so it's, and that's where I encourage it. You know, not just, you can see where it's good for business, but you can see where it would foster better family relations, better coworker relations, better, you know, it's team building at the end of the day. And I think, especially when you do these formats, you know, golf has these different formats, like we say, whether it's scramble or what have you, um, that it, uh, you can see there's multiple benefits and it obviously it helps, yeah, with getting people together, no matter what level. I have I have something that I want to ask you that I just find fascinating, which is that, you know, your golf has historically been really a, a, a male uh, game and a male sport. And what was it like for you as a woman going to companies, going to golf companies um, and really breaking that barrier and and going in as not only as a golf person but as a businesswoman, going into the golf world with companies as a businesswoman and looking for that relationship with uh, with golf related companies. Yeah, it's it's been an interesting um, career path. I didn't, you know, I grew up playing um, kind of jack of all trade, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. I played golf, tennis ran track, gymnastics, all that, swam competitively. And so I wasn't like a fanatic golfer. I did not play in college. Um, I was working for MGM Latin America in Miami. And then somebody said, hey, you should you know, talk to these people. Toda Las Americas, so it's a Latin golf tour. I worked for them. When I was in Argentina, I met the people from the PGA tour. And they hired me to run a World Cup. So I always say that was my MBA. So when you talk about, <laughs> you can imagine this one. A woman in the golf industry in a Latin American country. So, I mean, it's just like, are you kidding me? This is, you know, really the cards are stacked against me as far as what we all know is doing business or being taken seriously or what have you. And I worked extremely hard. I mean, I'm 100% serious when I say it was an MBA. But um, I think we all realize too, when you have a big company like I did, the PGA Tour behind me. But it really did teach me, again, resilience and people just, you know, they take you seriously. At, at some point you have to. It's just, you know, we're all, it, it is different. You do, it would have been a lot easier if I was a man. It still would be easier if I was a man. But Women's Golf Day wouldn't exist if I was a man. 
I'm can bet every dollar I have that that's for, for, you know, you like, you have to think it, I'm sure, you know, you, you s- speak to this more than anybody. I'm a person who does believe in meditation and stuff. But I just think everything does happen for a reason and it takes us to a path. And the more aware we are, the more, you know, the, the universe conspires to help us. Everyone's not woo woo, but um, these opportunities happen. You're either going to like, you know, sulk about them or you're going to, use it as a, a way to get stronger and better and move on. It, it is no, there's no other path. You either die or you move on. I mean, it's not simple, you know, curl up in a ball and sometimes you need to curl up in a ball, but you know, and it's, you know, we had a lot of naysayers and I have to say, I'm really happy. We got, um, you know, Callaway got on this year and I can't thank them enough because they're such a huge brand. Not only did they come on what nobody knew, we knew this, they came on as sponsors just a couple of weeks before this year's event. But on our day, they launched clubs specifically designed for women called Reva. Uh, so, like It wasn't just like, oh, thank you, Callaway, that little sponsor, pat in the back. No, they put their money where their mouth is. They made clubs, which obviously that didn't just happen overnight. Reva, R-E-V-A, and they call it the revolution. So, you, you know, it makes me happy because they didn't do it because of Women's Golf Day, but they knew that these brands aligned and – they are proactively doing things where women are being, and that's why I call just women being taken seriously. You know, having a seat at the table, having a voice. If they're making clubs, the market spoke. What nobody could believe, nobody even in my golf industry could believe the success of this event. It was short format. It's simple. It's not complicated, but you can't lie. You go online and it is crazy. The talked about what have you. And, that's consumers saying we want this. Alyssa, congratulations. This is such Thanks. a you and I, I knew when this launched, it was going to be something very, very, very special. And you were such a pioneer in this space. And it's incredible to see the growth nation nationwide, worldwide. What are some of your plans for next year? What do you hope to achieve next year? Kind yeah. of given the, the uncertainty of everything this year. Yeah, like, you know, our, our taglines are engaged in power support. And so the, the COVID thing, this is where I think like if people can look, we actually, I mean, it was so much hard work and we're so stressed and tired. My team, I give them so much credit, but we now have over 50 videos. One of them is called inspiration. I mean, there's uh, basic lessons, um, fitness, all things. And that would make women more comfortable for if you've been thinking about it or wanting to go out that it forced us to do that. So we're going to do a little bit more of that. We don't want to get in the content game. I'd love to share this video there as well. But giving women resources, and we were supposed to do a um, we we're supposed to do a summit, you know, a conference, which was going to be the World Golf Hall of Fame. So if women wanted to come for a three day experience, it would be the two days prior to golf day, and that got canceled this year. But I think we'll try to when that whole conference and those type of get togethers. And, you know, we launched a membership program because I also think the thing is, if you were traveling to Uganda or Morocco or Italy or um, Ireland, I think at least you could tap into a group of like minded women, even if you didn't necessarily go play golf, you're not going on a golf trip, but you can meet up with them. And I think we're all looking for that connectivity. And I think people who do travel and get around, it's nice to be able to connect with somebody. Absolutely. Thank you, Alyssa. I can't wait to keep in touch and would love to have you back as well. As Risa, I'm sure that you would as well. And absolutely. And Thank this you. is so inspiring. I'm going to get out on a golf course. And, you know, it's Arch. Kind of and Chelsea Piers. Chelsea, well, I'm, I'm not in Manhattan anymore. I moved out to the suburbs. But I think it's oh. interesting. I think that there is, for many women who live in a city, city, there's a mental block between understanding how easy it can really be to participate in golf. And you gave us some really good ideas for how to stick our toe in the water, even if we're, we live in concrete jungles. (laughs) And and if you want, like I said, go to the website and look at the videos that are there. It should be inspiring. You're going to see a little young woman from the first tee. I think she can't be like 12 or 13 and her inspiring story. And, you know, it's lots of, you know, people from all over. And it's, it really hopefully will encourage people to find a a way that works for them. Alyssa, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. And your site is um, womensgolfday.com. Yeah. And uh, all these social media 
is at women's W O M E N S G O L F D A Y women's golf day. Thank you, Alyssa. Risa. Thank you. Dan, what an amazing time we've how had. Do we, how do we end this conversation? This has been so much fun. I'm so happy to be filling in for Neza Aloui. She'll be back next week with everyone and is very excited to, to be back for the launch of fall. But Risa, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for the idea and have loved, loved, loved this conversation. So some of the takeaways from today are surprising ones. Uh, I didn't know Alyssa's story. And so one takeaway is that try, try, get out and try. She took on the world of golf in Latin America as an American woman. So go out and try. The other piece is that use golf, not just as a way of having a fun time and being involved in a sport and being able to be outdoors. But even while you're doing that, you're really helping your mind and your body with focus, release, focus, release, having an opportunity to understand what your self-talk is, seeing where you need to edit yourself and review and rewrite and giving yourself the opportunity to really be able to celebrate being able to just even get out there and do it. Find your start point and go for it. Please feel free to contact me at Dr. Risa Riger on LinkedIn or my email address, drr at expertinchange.com. Come back, see us next week. And as always, we've saved a seat for you.